Control. Oh, okay. I forgot about it. Who could forget our anal control? It used to be easier when we just called it repeat. You know, but it, <laughs> it really doesn't go with Tony, so. Um, yep. I don't think we had any substantial increases. The in overtime that. was up a little bit. Oh. It is. Um, yeah. The area of that, I would say, is uh, I was actually with him Sunday when he got a call. And we have a good relationship with um, the folks out there in Epping with that Raptor group. Uh, you may have remembered Tony rescued a snowy owl off the side of 101. Uh, the fishing game couldn't catch it. Tony walked, just walked down with a blanket and grabbed it. Um, <laughs> saved the great horned owl. So we're doing, even though that's not his primary responsibility, it's more the, the domestic animals. It's one of those things. People, as we see with animals, call. Yeah. And I don't feel that we should be saying no to them. It's one of those things, I think it breeds um, a trust in government that when there's some, you know, an animal that's injured that we're gonna try to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Try to help if, other, if there aren't other assets available. Uh, so Tony has created a great uh, working relationship with the folks in Fish and Game. Uh, they've actually created a, a regional association now of animal control officers because as, a lot, as we learned after Pete retired, there were more things that we needed to be doing as far as training and certifications, which yeah. we accomplished with Tony. Yeah. So some of it is training, but a lot of it is just the nature of calls. We've been going out to try to help people. It's, we go out and somebody gets a bat in the house. Is that really an animal control problem? But a lot of our people, let's face it, in this community, we're getting older. And they want somebody to help them, and they want somebody to help mm -hmm. them now. <laughs> and I, I just don't feel it's right for us to say no when <laughs> Tony's pretty capable in those areas of dealing with, you know, domestic is his primary thing. But he took the time to do the training dealing with some of the wildlife issues mm -hmm. that we utilize his skill set in that area. So it is a little bit more overtime. Mm -hmm. Supplies and expenses, you were up a little bit too. Some of the equipment we had when we transitioned from Peter to Tony had been with Peter since he'd been with the department 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So all we're doing is updating some of the, the have a hot traps and stuff like that, uh, things like that, and new uniforms for Tony and Jack. So we just want to make sure that the, the appearance is professional and we upkeep our equipment mm -hmm. that we're utilizing with the animals. Rusty? Yep. Yeah. yeah, on on that subject, when uh, Tony first took over, I had a couple of people call and say they had phoned in because of whatever it was, dog mm -hmm. in the neighborhood or something, and they were told that he, uh, he, he didn't work overtime, that he couldn't respond. But now, so now you do, you're being a little more flexible yeah, we, we're just seeing, I don't know why it is, we're just seeing a greater demand for those services. Mm -hmm. uh, people, um, I, I think we have so many people that move here from other places that yeah. don't deal with yeah. what we deal with in New Hampshire. We, we're a community of 15,000, yeah. but I took a walk with Tony. We went out off of uh, Toll Farm Road looking for this great one owl on Sunday, yeah. and it was a hike getting in the back there out behind the power oh, farm sure. and, and all that area. Okay. We still have a lot of areas where we do have a lot of game and wildlife, Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes fish and game just can't respond because they're spread yeah. out so thin across the state, yeah. and they literally have no overtime. Yeah, because um, Pete McKinnon was always there when you <laughs> called him, and and we were spoiled. But uh, I'm glad that there's, there's a little more flexibility. And I will say that a local vet, uh, where I bring my cats, uh, I asked how they're doing, and they said that he's very polite. They really like him very much. Mm -hmm. They were very happy to see him you know, as the animal control officer, and that made me feel very good. That's good to hear. He's a great guy. He's very <laughs> friendly, and especially when we're dealing with a lot of people that mm -hmm. they don't know who else to call. I mean, you can call somebody, but one mm -hmm. of the closest ones that I know, just know because a friend of mine called him, is out of Barrington, New Hampshire. Yeah. If they're available, you get a bat in your house or a squirrel gets loose or something yeah. like that. Is that truly what an animal control officer does in every community? Probably not, but I think in this community it's yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah. So. Now do we do parking administration of this too? Yes, sir. Next half. So 